Okay. So we have our asset. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to say, let's make two of the trains now. I mean, you know, we're basically going to have two instances, essentially, of that asset. So I'm going to call this anim1. Anim1 is going to be, what's it going to consist of? Well, it's going to be the asset that we just made. And I'm going to say none. We don't want to transform it at all. But we are going to bring it in here, right where it already was. And we'll just still say that this is the asset. Why do this? when we just got it and then that's that? Well, because now over here, I can move it around, but the original thing is still there. And that's important because I want two of them. So the first one will say, I'm gonna keyframe it here. Oh, you know what? Let's make this be 48 frames. I, I wanna do a pretty short animation just because again, you know, you'll get the idea. So I'm going to keyframe it here. Beginning and end, it'll be there, but maybe on frame 12. Um, turn off view. Frame 12, we'll have it move up to like, just move up a little bit. Keyframe that. I guess I'll just, there you go. So we did this. I'll turn the clock on so it plays in real time. So there you go. So the idea here is it's moving forward, hits, and then kind of backs up a little bit maybe from like bouncing off or something. And I'm gonna do pretty much the same on this side, except I wanna, at the very least, I want it to you know, face the other way. Um, let's have it start back here. And the same thing, we'll have it end there too. And at 12, we'll move it, move up pretty much the same amount. Um, you know, they're intersecting each other right now, obviously. But, you know, once our simulation takes over, we'll have the, we'll cr that'll be the crumble part. Cool. So something like that. Bam. So those are our animations. And then I'm going to make another note here. This will be our sim, the sim itself. So we need those two different assets. So I'm going to go grab uh, anim1 asset. I'll just make another thing here. Let's say anim2 asset. Doesn't look like anything's happening. We need to actually transform them into this object because the transforms are up here. They didn't happen in here. If you just grab this, well, there is no animation here, but there is an animation up here in the transform tab here. So you need to say, actually transform them into here. So there you go. So we got it. Very cool. From here, we could do an RBD unpack, like so. Uh, make sure to, you pretty much always want to use enforced unique name attribute, for instance. What that will do is make sure, uh, well, pretty much what it says, that they have unique names. We, may, we gave them names before. You remember back and metal and everything else. But because we have two of them, we're going to have two backs, two metals. That doesn't work in the RBD, in the actual bullet solver. It needs to have unique names. So this will basically append a underscore one, underscore two, or maybe it's underscore zero, underscore one. You know, for every one of these assets that it finds, every one of these RBD packs, basically. So again, it'll update all the constraints. It's It'll keep it nice and unique. So we've got it. We've got everything. We've got all the pieces and all the constraints. Um, if you want to see it again, RBD explode. There they are. Something like that. It doesn't actually look quite right, but it is right. This maybe this is a bug. Whatever. <laughs> well, I guess we'll find the, the real test will be uh, actually running this thing. So here we go. RBD bullet solver. Like so. And honestly, that really should be it. So I'm going to click on flipbook with new settings and let's see what happens. Okay. And there's the result. So you can see, it all works. It's all working. It's not as good as it could be, but it is literally working. What we have here is a very kind of rubbery, a kind of elastic look. You know, the pieces try to get back to where they originally were, and that's because the constraints are pulling them back to where they originally were. So it makes sense, but it is working. And um, so we want to 
make uh, turn on plasticity, meaning the constraints are kind of have a new resting positions. So when it gets crunched, they've been stretched so far that kind of like bending a paperclip, it now it takes on that new form. And that's how we'll get that kind of deformed metal look. I would also say that um, I'd like to see the deformation travel farther. So I'm gonna make the glue weaker so that more glues convert to the actual soft, uh, the soft constraints instead. And I'll make the softness it's also itself a little bit stiffer. So all those things and more. And, and let's see, uh, obviously this is the kind of thing that you would iterate over quite a bit in an actual you know, VFX setting. And you could get notes on all that and everything else. But we're gonna just do, we're gonna shoot from the hip. So what did I say? I said uh, less, so make the glue weaker so that more of them break, but have the actual soft constraints be tougher. And then the most important thing is turning on the secret plasticity down here, the enable, and say you will take on a new form, you will be a permanently stretched constraint very easily by lowering the threshold. Uh, we also want it to harden quickly because I want it to not be springy. Metal doesn't, I mean, it does spring a little bit, but I don't want it to spring too, too much. So I can't stop and talk about all these constraints settings right now, but basically this is saying, do enable the plasticity easily, do become stronger quickly. Uh, meaning become stiffer and keep that new shape without uh, oscillating a lot. Stop it. So let's come back here, and I'm just gonna just gonna run the sim again. Okay, and here's our result. So you can see that the deformation travels much further back to around here now. You can see it's still a little springy, which is fine, but it definitely stays in its new crumpled form, and that's what we want. So. I'm gonna put a file cache node down. Oh, that's a regular file node. File cache node down. I love this new Houdini 19 file cache node. All the stuff we used to have to set up ourselves, like version numbers and stuff like that, uh, much easier. I'm just gonna say base name metal, and that's it. Save it, ba -ba -ba -bum, like so. And like so, and then like so. Oh, and like so, and like so, there we go. Now it's cached, we won't have to rerun that sim later on. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say that's it.